What is it? I guess I just can't believe this is happening. It's like I always imagined. Well, I hope reality isn't disappointing. No. It's just been the most wonderful night. I feel like we're under some kind of a spell. Sweetheart, we've been under a spell for a long time. The spell is finally broken. We're quite a pair, you know that? I mean, we're really a good How many people do you think would wait all these years between the anniversary celebration? I, I guess I'm just, just afraid it's too good to be true. Porque yo dije que no te quería. Y ahora lo que pretendes es que me separe de Santana. No puedo hacer eso, Iden. Ni siquiera por ti. Tu mujer te es infiel. No lo sé. Y yo creo que sí lo sabes. De ser así no habría venido. ¿Por qué no dejas ya de sentirte culpable? No hace falta que seas tan moral. Sabes lo que ella siente por ti. Santana, no te merece. Así no llegaremos a ninguna parte. Quiero que me digas una cosa. Si estuvieras completamente seguro de que ella ve a otro hombre, ¿cambiarían las cosas? Haré lo que crea que debo hacer. Hagan lo que hagan los demás. Aunque te duela. Lo siento, pero no me entiendes. Te he dicho que me gustaría que Santana te fuera infiel, pero no te he dicho lo feliz que me haría. Y también lo feliz que me sentiría si algo de esto pasara y volvieras a ser libre. Why can't you? Why won't you admit you feel the same way? You obviously missed out on a significant aspect of your medical training, doctor. That's how babies are made. I meant what I said, Mason. There's a chance that that baby might be mine. Not to belabor the point, Mark, but that's a scientific impossibility. You know, I wasn't even going to say anything about it, but as usual, you forced the issue. You planning to stall the annulment, Mark? Why are you trying to hold us up? No, as a matter of fact, I was going to go along with the annulment. I was going to keep Mary's little secret, but that was before I found out about the child. Before I had to look at your smug face and listen to your smug voice. There's no way that child could be yours. Mary would never have let you touch her. Yeah, well, you'd like to think so, wouldn't you, Mason? As a matter of fact, our marriage was consummated after you seduced her. I guess she was just doing a little comparison shop. Well, as Dad himself would say, everything in life is a trade-off. I hope Minx can look at it that way. In return for everything she's lost that she's getting uh, back. Listen, uh, listen, Mother is just going to have to get used to the fact that her adored husband committed fraud. I just wish there were a way to protect her. Well, at least she'll have her house back and the satisfaction of seeing C.C. Capwell down and out in Santa Barbara. <laughs> Chris, have a seat. We were just about to order some champagne to celebrate the rise in the Lockridge fortune. Along with a dash of bitters, because T. McDonald is going to have to give up his good name for the cause. Has Mason come up with the proof yet? No, no, not yet. But we've got messages for him left all over town. He knows where to find us. He'll show up with the papers anymore. You scum, McCormick. I didn't know what upset Mary. Nothing can change the truth, Mason. You don't even have a passing acquaintance with the truth, Mark, or anything resembling Yeah, well, then ask Mary. She won't deny it if you just confront her with it. I wouldn't make up something like this, Mason. You'd say or do anything. Use any body if it suited your own sick purposes. Mason. Ask her anyway, okay? Excuse me.
Excuse me, can I have a phone here right away, please? Yes, sir. There's nothing to celebrate yet. Not until... There he is. Did you find it, Mason? Not now, man. You agreed to provide the proof we need that my brother framed me for embezzling. Do you have any change? What? Change? I need to make a... Never mind, I've got it. Good. Make your calls later. I'm talking to you, Mason. Get your hand off the phone. We made a deal. The hell was your deal? You get your proof when I'm ready. I need to talk to Mary. Uh, hold on. Mary? See you. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Hello? It's Mark. Don't hang up. Something's happened and we need to talk right away. Mark, we're going to talk tomorrow and Father Metcalf's yeah, office. Won't wait. Until then, Mason knows that you and I slept together. I'll be there as soon as I can. Figaro Street Clinic. Mary? Mason? I talked to Mark. I know he just called me Mason. I'm so sorry. It's true, isn't it? I thought you wanted to get CC as bad as I do. You said you wanted to repay him for what he did to your mother. Get away from me. Mason, listen to me. I know what you must be going through. I know, but listen, once I explain it to you, you'll understand. Mason, say something. You swore to us you'd find a way into those archives. Have you lost your nerve? Get away from me, damn it! Mason, please answer me. Mary. Operator, Mary. can I have information? Please come right away. A woman's passed out in the waiting room. Oh. Okay, Mason. But I'm not going anywhere until this is settled. Mary? What is it? I'm thinking about the first time you brought me here. Oh, that's right. I see you're wearing something silvery white and filmy, <laughs> and you were the most exquisite thing I've ever seen in my life. I grew talking so much. I don't even know what I was talking. I couldn't stop talking. So. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so glad you were talking. I love listening to you, and I was grateful for it. Grateful for what? Well, I, you were charming and, and so easy, and I was so frightened. That I couldn't even say a word. You made me comfortable. Are we remembering the same night? Yes. I had Nisha Jelly. What are you talking about? I'm out here with a movie star, a beautiful, talented movie star. No, no, Let. Let. Star Let. Oh. That's what they called me. Well, I saw your pictures. <laughs> I read the magazine articles about you, and you were sophisticated and elegant. And oh. I was enchanted by you, just as I am right now. And please don't be afraid of me. It's just us here, this way. I know. It's come full circle, isn't it? Uh -huh. Time for me to be grateful. Grateful for having another chance. I want that chance. I want you back, Sophia. When you left, I filled this uh, life of mine with things. I filled this house with people. Still left me feeling empty. Everything is different. Except for one thing. You're still the most desirable, the most passionate woman I've ever known. I made a mistake letting you go one time. I'm not going to make that mistake. Quiero que digas, Eden, ya no te quiero. No te quiero en mi vida. Ese parece ser tu guión de siempre. Esas fueron las palabras que utilizaste cuando me dejaste por ti. Eso lo hice por ti. Me casé con él para protegerte. Fue un error terrible. Un doloroso error. Pero ahora estás cometiendo el mismo con Santana. No digas eso, no tienes idea no de puedo nada. puedo creer que no me des la satisfacción de saber que quieres estar conmigo y no con ella. Eden, ella es mi mujer. He jurado respetarla y renunciar a todas las mujeres. Si no puedo ser capaz de cumplir mis juramentos, ¿cómo voy a poder vivir conmigo mismo? Estás preso de esos juramentos. Que hiciste por diferentes razones. Aunque no quiera seguir casado con ella. 
Y de esto no es asunto tuyo. Ya ve. Tendré que ser infeliz el resto de mi vida porque no puedo estar contigo. Y dices que no es asunto mío. No quiero que seas infeliz. No tratas de hacerla feliz a ella. ¿Y lo estás consiguiendo? O se siente muy desgraciada porque sabe perfectamente que tú solo me quieres a mí. Bueno, está bien. Si no me respetas ni las promesas que he hecho, ¿por qué no te respetas a ti misma? Tú dijiste que te mantendrías alejada de mi matrimonio. Sé que te mentí. Porque tú y yo somos el uno para el otro. Y no puedo guardar esa promesa. Pues yo sí. Y lo haré. Y si me quieres como dices, también lo harás tú. No llores, Siden. Lo has intentado todo esta noche y no puedo soportar nada no más. No me hables en ese tono. Cuando viniste a mí, estabas llorando y me suplicaste que te escuchara. Ese era otro. Era otro momento. ¿Y qué quieres que haga? ¿Quieres que deje de quererte? ¿Quieres que lo deje todo y desaparezca? Solo quiero que dejes de hacerlo todo más difícil de lo que ya es. Ya veo. ¿Quieres que te facilite las cosas para poder dejarme y marcharte con Santana? Todo esto que estás haciendo... Estás... Estás siendo tan injusta. No quiero seguir siendo justa. Te quiero. Adiós. Adiós. gallery of your own to house it in. Mm. And a designer wardrobe for you. For me? Yeah. Strictly speaking, I'm not really considered part of the Lockridge family anymore, but oh, a sweet thought line. Oh, come on. A designer wardrobe and a month in Tahiti with your own personal tour guide and snorkeling companion. Okay? <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, me. And the fulfillment of a lifelong ambition to make love underwater alongside the coral reef. <laughs> All the exotic flora and fauna, right? I can't Come believe on. you remember that. <laughs> we probably both drown. Maybe we won't. Do you know I had a very sobering thought? Uh, oh, I can't do that. Can't no, no, do that. no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. No, what if we're getting carried away? I mean, putting the champagne before the horse. Let me tell you something. What? We're supposed to get carried away. That's our style. Scott and Zelda. Wallace and Edwards. Right? Blondie and Dagwood. <laughs> I mean, we haven't actually pulled this off yet. <laughs> Don't worry, it's in the bag. Well, we're going to leave all the mundane considerations to Grant Capwell. He can chase Mason all over town and try to pry him off Barstool. That's all. You and I have better things to do. It's like drinking champagne. That, too. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to tell Mason about this. Now. I mean, she's been chafing at the bed for some time. That is true. If she doesn't get into our house soon, she may take it into her head to put more buckshot in Cece's derriere. <laughs> well, if that's the case, maybe I sh shouldn't rush things. <laughs> We've got to move fast, Mason. If CC finds out any of this, he'll get to those documents first and destroy them. If you don't leave me alone, Grant, I'm going to take your proof and burn it. All right, Mason. I wasn't going to bring this up, but I know all about your married girlfriend. I also know that CC refused to lift a finger to help her get an annulment. Now, you can sit here and drink yourself into a stupor. Or you can get up and do something to pay your father back. Intelligence reports are way out of date, Grant. Dad's no longer top priority on my agenda. Then he should be. He's grabbed all the wealth and all the power. If you don't help stop him now, you're going to keep on being his victim, like your mother was before you. I know how you loved her and how you hate what he did to her. Well, Pamela couldn't fight him, but you can, Mason. You know what to do. Now all you need to do is do it. I think 
for rushing things a little. I think we both know better than that. We've waited a long time for this. I'm not about to let it pass by. I'm sorry, Sophia. I'm so used to doing things my way. No one knows better than I. I want you very much. I know you want me too. And I love you. Please come upstairs with me. I don't think Rose is here. I'm not here to see Mama. I'm here to see you. Why? To tell you something I'm sure you'll want to hear. I'm tired of fighting. I decided to stop. I don't understand. Yes, you do. You want Cruz. Well, you can have him. Giving him up. You're more handsome. <laughs> Thank you. It's true. That is lovely. That one of Eden's? No, it's mine. Yours? Mm-hmm. Don't tell me you wore it. On our wedding night, I had it folded away. I found it just where I left it. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> it's a wonderful way, Thomas. <laughs> to be able to recapture all that is like a miracle. See, you still have doubts. Listen to me for a minute. There's a difference between us now. The difference is very good. There's an honesty that I cherish, and we shouldn't do anything to jeopardize it. I don't want to steal either. All right, then there's something I'm going to have to tell you. And when I do, if you change your mind about us, Heard you were propping up the bar. Go away. Oh, you're in a good mood. Thought your drinking days were behind you, Mason. Apparently not. Look, if you're here to give me a pep talk, I've already had mine tonight. And if you're here to kick me out, you're too early because I was just about to leave. I'll get you a cab. Never mind. No, I'm going to get you a cab. I don't want you to drive home by yourself, okay? If you knew where I was going and why, you wouldn't be in such a hurry to arrange transportation for me. Does this have anything to do with you barging into the company records room and demanding to see files from 30 years back? I was going to wait until you were sober to ask you about that one. That day may never come, but I will tell you this much. It seems that the legend of C.C. Capwell and his glorious empire I built on a lie. On borrowed money and borrowed time. You're not making any sense, Mason. Oh, but I'm about to make a lot of dollars for the other Capwell black sheep. Our dear old Uncle Grant. You didn't see him when you came in lurking about, did you? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Well, get used to the sight of him, because you're going to see a lot of him. He's about to rise from the ashes and nail our father for doing him out of his inheritance many years ago and doing him out of the dear Pamela, my erstwhile mom. Uh, Mason, look. I don't really understand what you're talking about, but why don't you go home and try to sleep it off? Don't worry, you can read about it in the papers tomorrow. This is just a sneak preview. I appreciate that. And by the way, if the Orient Express is not in your name, I'd um, contact my lawyer right away. Don't say I never gave you anything. <laughs> Maybe I will Can if I you call me that cat. I have a phone, please. You know, I think I've changed my mind. I'd like to call Mary. No, you're not. Do you have a fight? Look, Mason, if you had a fight with Mary, don't try to take it out on Daddy. 
Or yourself, for that matter. We did not have a fight. But I think you should call her. You need her now. Don't tell me what I need, Eden. You know one for giving advice. Your life's at least as screwed up as mine is. If you want to... If you want to help me, call the cab. Mason, you still here? Where'd all your bloodthirsty friends go? To the Lockridge house. To regain it, I imagine. Well, you can tell them just to start redecorating. Don't touch. thing to do, Mark. Sorry, Mary, but it provoked me. Besides, it had to come out sometime. Especially if the child turns out to be mine. This child is not yours. You don't know that until you've had a test. Mark, you have no claim on this baby. I will never let you anywhere near it. If that child turns out to be mine, I'm not going to let the world think it's Mason's. I'll never give him that satisfaction. Oh, I see. It's not about the child. It's not about your paternal feelings. It's about getting even with Mason, isn't it? No, that's not true. I happen to care about the child. And I'll never agree to this annulment unless you agree to my terms. Your terms? You don't have any right to terms. You don't have any right to talk to me like this. Mark, you forced yourself on me. That's your version, not mine. Well, you've left me no choice anyway. Now I have to tell Mason that you raped me. All right, fine, tell him. You tell him, I'll deny it because I didn't rape you, Mary. If I'd had you to press charges... You can't accuse me of a crime like that months later. No one's going to believe you. Mason will believe me. He knows that's the only way I would be with you. Oh, and he's going to go crazy, Mark. You shouldn't have pushed it this far. I can handle Mason. You sound like you're looking forward to it. Get some competition, huh? Well, Mason's going to pull out all the stops, Mark. You know, your negligence was responsible for the death of a woman, and you covered that up. When he exposes that, your career is finished. And he's not going to stop there. No, I don't think any of that's going to happen, Mary. You know why? Because you're still the honest, straightforward girl that I grew up with. And when Mason questions you about all this, all you're going to tell him is the truth. And the truth is, it's that you stopped fighting at the end. You didn't scream... You didn't try to claw my eyes out. You're my lawful wife, and I pleaded with you to let me be your husband. And you gave in. You changed your mind, and you made love to me. Mary, that's the way it <gasps> happened. And whether you believe it or not, I still love you. Oh, you love me! Why are you trying to ruin my life then? I'm not! I still care about you very much. But I have to take care of myself now. I have to make sure that my rights as a... as a father are gonna protect it. And you of all people should understand that. Can't you? I found a lump in my breast, Cece. I had it examined. It was positive. It was cancer. I had an operation. They did a lumpectomy and followed up by radiation. I'm still getting radiation treatments. The doctors haven't found any trace of any more cancer. Are they hopeful for full recovery then? They're optimistic. There's no guarantees in something like this. It's a wait and see situation. 
Casey, would you say something, please? Why didn't you tell me sooner? Because things are so bad between us, I couldn't... Didn't you think I would have compassion for you? Cece, I couldn't bear it if you had pity for me. I said compassion, not pity. I know, I heard you, but I couldn't stand it if you felt sorry for me. I took a risk just telling you right now that I had a reason. We have a chance to start a new relationship based on trust and honesty. That's why I told you. Then it's something I should tell you. What is that? Well, Mother, how does it feel to be back? Hmm? Like coming home. <laughs> Just like coming back to our home, sweet home. <laughs> Thank you, Lionel. Thank you for getting it back for me. I'm the one who lost it. Of course I had to get no, it back. No, 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 you didn't lose it. It was stolen from us. Oh. But we can forget about the black period in our lives. What I want to know is how you managed to get it back from that revolting character, C.C. Capwell. Well, May he never sit in comfort again. <laughs> well, Mother, it's, it's, a, it's a long and kind of complicated story. Well, uh, what is it? Uh, this is it. Mason just went into the house. I followed him there. Looks as if my brother's on his way out. I haven't explained anything to Minx. Uh, what is there to explain? This is victory. Hello, Minx. It's been a long time. Congratulations. The story goes that you were brought here as a blushing child bride. Well, if everything goes according to plan, it looks like it's all going to be yours again. What's this Capwell doing here? And what does he mean by it looks like the house is going to be ours? You told me that you'd got it. Minx, it's as good as yours. There'll be a hearing and probably a lot of legal rigmarole. But when the dust settles, we'll all have what we want. It's a shame T. McDonald has to end up with a little mud on his reputation, but then again, he deserves it, doesn't he? Oops. Oh, I'll tuck in for the night, were you? Visions of power plays dancing in your head, and I interrupt it. Well, at least I won't have to go upstairs and root you out of bed. What are you doing here, Mason, this late and in this condition? It's never too late, Dad, as I am about to prove. If it's about this grant business again, go home. You're wasting my time. Your time's not worth as much as it used to be, Dad. This is a book that you cannot judge by its cover, which has seen better days. But what's inside it is worth a fortune. Your fortune, to be exact. And I'm about to turn it over to your outcast brother, Grant. Mason, not long ago you threatened me with an expose that you'd written. On it were all blank pages. Is that more the same? Oh, that was our last-ditch effort to keep you from wreaking more havoc. I was desperate then. This is, this is quite different. These are the records that you fixed to make Grant look like an embezzler. Gone, lost, but not forgotten. At least not by Grant. He holds a grudge even longer than you do. I never fixed any records, Mason. Grant was caught with his hands in the tilt and he was kicked out by my father. Ooh, I know that's the official version, but the reality is somewhat different. It seems that T. McDonald Lockridge very cleverly managed to convince the Capels to buy a phony company. And never one to miss an opportunity for self-aggrandizement, you let the Lockridge squirm off the hook and framed your brother Grant. Now, the alternate version is that you were in cahoots with T. McDonald from the very beginning. Either way, you stink. Believe what you want, Mason. That's your privilege. Thank you for the warning. Oh, that isn't a warning, Dad. This is gloating. Can't you tell the difference? I'd rather see you gloat about being happy with your life. Your defeat will make me happy. Son, you got one thing going for you. That's Mary. For her own reason, she's in love with you and she's carrying your child. The first capital grandchild. Maybe it's high time you got married. Now, I know you asked me to uh, help you get the annulment before, and I refuse. I regret that. But if I can do anything to speed it up, I will right now. Trying to bribe me not to use this book? I don't care what you do with that. I'm talking about your life now. Happiness of it. The right happiness that comes along so rarely. You gotta seize it. You gotta pursue it. You... Grab 
Come on, Mason. The chance of a lifetime. You're telling me that T. MacDonald Lockridge actually tricked the capitals out of a large amount of money? Well, well, the motive was spite, not money. You see, uh, Emmett Capwell uh, had blocked a real estate deal that Dad had been working on for years, and, and this was Dad's way of getting even. Mace, do you feel faint? Faint? I haven't felt this alive in ages. To think that he pulled off a stunt like that and got away with it. <laughs> yes, but his reputation was not very good, you know. Oh, but that, that's the best part. It's as if my darling T had come home to me again. T as in tiger. In case you didn't know before, you do now. I thought you might be able to forgive your husband for being a crook. I never thought you'd revel in it. Well, that's just what I'm doing, reveling. And he was no crook. He loved a good joke. When the laugh was on the Catwells. The laugh was on me. Oh, Grand, lighten up. Actually, it was very funny, especially the way we worried about Minx's reaction. You went off and made it on your own, Grant. I mean, it's better than being under your uncle's thumb there. I mean, this way you can reclaim what was lost, plus interest. I still don't appreciate your mother's glee. Oh, pish tosh. If T had lived longer, he'd probably have sold your family the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Sorry to be late for the party. I can't stay very long either. Where is it? Where's what? The proof you were going to dig up for us. Couldn't find any. Sorry. What? I don't understand. Now, you said you were going Grand, to... Grant, I searched through every old record I could find from that year. Found nothing to prove that Dad set you up. You're lying, Miss. Did Cece get to you? My father yeah. always gets to me, Grant. That's not the point. The point is, I can't help you in your anti-Capwell plot. You'll have to come up with another way to do your big brother in. No, no, no. Does this mean that we haven't got the house back? I'm afraid so, Mother. Sorry if I spoil the party. Mason, damn it. I uh, gotta go now. Now, we can't give up. There's still a chance. I have no intention of giving up. From now on, you and yours are gonna stay the hell out of it. Miss Capwell? I can close up alone if you want to leave now. Oh, no, no, that's, that's okay. I think I'm going to stay a little while longer. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why did you ask me if that was Eden on the phone? Just curious how long it would take her. What does that mean? Nothing. I always say the wrong thing to you, so just don't pay any attention. And why did you run off and leave me at the restaurant? Because I wanted to be alone. What is it? Were you? Uh, running out of these things, I gotta get a refill tomorrow. What did you say? Nothing. You know, I can't understand you. One minute you're upset and now you're acting as if nothing happened. It's, you're all calm. Well, maybe I'm just learning to accept things the way they are. They say acceptance brings a certain kind of peace. And just exactly what is it you're accepting? You lead your life and I lead mine. It's been that way since we've been married. I've wasted a lot of time trying to change things. Now I'm, I'm just giving in. You're giving in to what? Is that your way of saying that you're, you're... You're seeing someone? Like Keith Timmons, for instance? It's my way of saying that maybe it's time that we call it quits. Maybe it's time we file for a divorce. It was Mason. He knocked over. What do you think you're doing? Sissy, I don't want you to argue with me. Because of what I've told you, I'm going to give you more time to think about it. I don't need it. any more time. I know how I feel. I know exactly how I feel. The same way I felt before you told me about the illness. I don't need any more time. Nothing has changed. You see, I am so lucky to be alive. So lucky I couldn't stand it if you felt sorry for me. I just gave Mason a little lecture on seizing the moment. I was really talking about us. You tell me your doctor gives you nothing but guarantees. Who has guarantees? Anybody have any guarantees in life? I spent my life looking for guarantees, controlling people. What has it done? It made me happy? Hasn't made me any happier. All I want now is to love you. Be loved by you. 
and we're here and now in this moment we care about each other do you think that you are any less desirable because of what you went through how can i prove to you how precious you are to me it's hard for me to believe believe it I'll try. What were you going to tell me before? Just that I'm, uh... I'm sorry you didn't tell me you were sick. Because I didn't want you to be alone, and I was hurt that you were alone. But we don't have to worry about that anymore. Because we're never going to be alone again. I didn't want to marry you, Cruz. I told you that it wouldn't work. Yes, you did. I loved you. I told you that living day in and day out with someone who didn't love me would be torture. Remember that? Yes, I remember But that. you said that you were ready for a house. You said that you were ready for my love. You said that you were ready for a child. I, you know, I, I was so worried that you would get so tired of it and feel so trapped. You swore to me that that would never happen. Santana, I said what I did because I believed it. I knew it. I knew it. I should have trusted myself. I wouldn't have had to go through the pain that I've been through every day of our marriage. I let myself believe that I could live with your love for Eden. I, I, I convinced myself that you would be so happy with Brandon and me that you would forget about her. I let myself forget that your love for her wouldn't torture me. Cruz, it hurts. It hurts so much. I never wanted to hurt you. You have to believe that. I do. It, it just doesn't help things. It, it makes everything worse. The only right thing to do is just be to let you go. Maybe I was absolutely crazy to, to try to convince you to marry me. Do you really want a divorce? No, for Brandon's sake, we should stay married. Who am I fooling? For my sake, too, I love you, Cruz. I know that I... I, I haven't been the kind of wife I should be for you. I, I've just been feeling so sorry for myself. I've been so angry with you. M maybe you, you haven't given me everything that I've needed, but... I haven't given you all that much, either. Cruz, I'm asking for another chance. Will you give that to me? I'm ready to go now, Miss Capwell. Would you like me to wait for you? No. Uh, you can go ahead and go. I'll lock up after you. Okay. You sure you'll be all right? I'll be fine. Good night. Good night. I've been here for hours. I want to talk to you. Talk's cheap. One of the cheapest things around. Beat inflation. Talk a lot. You don't even have to mean what you say. Just keep your mouth moving. Don't you want me to explain? No, yeah, what's to explain? I know about the birds and the bees. I don't think I want to hear the gory detail. Oh, Mason, stop. I know a thing or two about lies and distrust, too. Seems to be a, a rite of passage with Capwell men. Mason, I have something to tell you. I know. You're pregnant. With our baby. Yours, mine, and Mark's. Don't do this. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. You were once a nun and lived in a convent. Behind a lot of walls. 
I've been living behind a lot of walls too. Different kind, the kind you can't see, but they protected me just the same. I felt safe behind them because I knew nobody could hurt me. Because I wouldn't let anybody behind the walls until I met you. I'd never known anybody like you before. You uh, didn't talk the same, act the same. I like that a lot. So I invited you to join me. Oh, hell, I just yanked you right inside with me. And then it was the two of us against the world. I like that even better. I uh, learned from your wisdom, took courage from your strength. You're an inspiration, revelation. I trusted, trusted you with my soul. And until tonight, I would have staked my life that you never, ever would have lied to me. Somewhere along the line, I guess I just misread all the signs. I can't think of another explanation, can you? Yes. It's a real simple one. When Mark told you that we consummated our marriage, he just left out one important detail. He raped me.